the last video I was talking about the laser cutter and the X axis and which parts uh, I would need and which uh, techniques. Um, this week uh, I received uh, the parts that I ordered for the X axis and uh, I'm going to check them out. So I'm going to basically do an unboxing video on my uh, CNC parts. Let's get to it. All right, let's see what we have. fit the table or the basis I want to build the whole piece on so I guess it will be something like this and like this all right so as you can see here the how the shape is it's round and uh, with an X on it so I reckon it's pretty damn strong and I can mount it all the way all these mounting things here so let's see what's in this box. The box. Woohoo! Ah, this is the belt I was talking about. Because I went for the belt and pulley uh, system. So this is the belt for the X axis. As you can see, it's um, it has the, the teeth, the tooth, and then I don't know if you can see it, but there's like iron inside. See, there's iron inside, and it should be pretty strong. So this will be here somewhere, you know, in a wheel or something, and pull the whole construction back and forth. So. I don't know what this is. And these. Oh, okay. Yeah. These are cable glands. I didn't even order them. They just went with the micro switches, I guess. Okay, well, free stuff, always good. Uh, here you have the tiny micro switches that I need. Um, they will be on the end in the beginning so when the whole rail system uh, hits the micro switch it will then the system knows it's at the end what I don't like is I asked for I ordered ball bearing micro switches there and this has just a lever with a weird shape on it so this is not what I ordered so I don't like that I have to call them again get mad on the phone and then to compensate they gave me this cable glands like I don't have enough of these I have tons of those ah annoying let's see what else is here ah these are the parts for the look look at this this is the linear ball bearing without bearings so, and they should make less of a noise, so you slide them on here, at least that's what I think, and it should go on here, oh, that's not so easy, I thought it would be smooth and easy, there we go, yeah, and this will just slide here. And almost no sound and it goes it's pretty smooth I mean it doesn't fall down just by itself but 
yeah, it's pretty smooth I guess when there's a lot of weight on it and certainly this belt with all the iron fibers in it should be strong enough to pull this I mean I can do it like really with no effort at all and it doesn't make any sound and I don't need to grease it I don't need to have ball bearings and uh, align stuff so that's perfect so obviously we have four of those two here and two on the other side that will be the whole construction will be built on there uh, these are the pulleys 16 uh, tooth teeth and uh, they uh, they are nice uh, there's even uh, yeah this is what I ordered as well they uh, did it with a, with a CNC machine they make the hole in the center bigger and they pu put a, some kind of ring inside and if I uh, turn these uh, hexagon keys they will actually expand uh, the, the center thing and will clamp itself onto the axis of the oh here it comes out here you can see it see so this little part uh, you can you know turn this and it will actually expand a little bit and just enough for the uh, for the whole thing to get grip to get grip on the on the stepper motor because that's the goal and I didn't they said I could glue them but I don't know with gluing if I may change my mind and I want a different uh, gear yeah when it's glued I can throw the whole stepper away so and this way I can you know try little variations in the in the in the pulleys so hopefully this will work and I don't need to go there but it's nice they kept word uh, so they made it all fit so that looks really good so what else is here two of those babies well that has to be the steppers themselves probably they are should be That's nice. Oh, oh yeah, I can feel the when I turn it. I can feel the how do you call that? Oh, this, the individual steps. So ta -ta 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 -ta, 200 steps per rotation. So that's good. Um, this can be opened, and when I open it, um, oh now I know what these are. These are supposed to go on here. That's it. I guess yeah that's it all right so all the cable cables can come in here and I can clamp it and it will um, uh, make sure that there's nothing coming in here like dust and also if you pull the cable you don't break it and as you can see here it is a nice form factor there for connecting the wires so that really looks good uh, it's nice and shiny uh, yeah feel heavy so that's cool I'm really happy with it um, except everything is okay and perfect except for the micro switches that I received that's really you know this should be okay but I asked for I ordered ball bearing micro switches and I, and I got a, a normal one so that's stupid you know. but overall I'm pretty happy uh, yeah, it should be okay. This is probably the same thing. I ordered two because I will have one here and I will have one here or maybe on the outside. I'm still not sure. And then the pulley will be on here. Let's see. Uh, I'm curious. Can't help myself. I have to try it. Ah. Yeah, like this. So this goes in here. Go in. Go in. It falls out, but you can get it in. All oh, that, that's that's good. Ah, there we go. And then this goes on here. Right. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect fit. That's nice. Really good. So I have to tighten those, and then it will be fixed to the motor, and I can put the belt right on here. At least that's what I planned for. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, it does see the width is okay perfect fit and also the tooth they're gripping on to the to the thing so yeah that works nice 
This week I got a question uh, about which solder to use. Actually, I got the same question from two people. So, a lot of people are struggling with this. Well, let's just start with one basic thing, which is the diameter of the solder. If you can only choose one diameter, because you're on a budget or whatever, go for the 0.5 millimeters or around. It's the most versatile thickness that you can have. You can do SMD with it, you can do through hole, you can do wires. It's very versatile. If you can pick another one, uh, like two, which I can, I did. I um, did an extra one, I bought an extra one which is 0.9 millimeters and I use this for bigger wires or uh, components that have a lot of uh, area for cooling, like bit MOSFETs that are surface mount these type of things, I use a somewhat bigger diameter. But by far I use the 0.5 the most. So that's the first thing. Don't go too big because you cannot you know, um, control the amount of solder that you're using. So go for a thinner one, it makes your life much easier. The second thing you have to be aware of is if it's leaded or lead free. Leaded is more easy to solder, it solders at a lower temperature, it's easier on your components, although modern components can withstand quite a lot of temperature, high temperatures, but it's something you have to be aware of. So if you're a beginner and you're soldering only for yourself, for your own little projects and you're not doing it every day, go for the leaded one, like 40% lead, which is fine. Um, if you're more professional and you have to also follow some regulations and you're more concerned about your health and you're doing it a lot, go for the lead free ones. So that's, that's the other topic. And the last thing which is important is the resin which is inside or the flux. Uh, you always need something with a flux which eats away all the corrosion on your uh, parts that you're soldering. Um, and uh, which is a good thing because that makes it actually solder. Um, in fact, it's the little vapor that comes out of the uh, solder when you're you know, melting it. it. There's a vapor coming out, a little bit of smoke. That is the flux. If the, if the solder is not smoking anymore, you shouldn't be soldering with it. So this is also why I say don't paint. You know, to put it on and then the old vapor goes off and then you're smearing it on your components. That's really bad. Don't do that. And the last thing you should be aware of when you're picking solder, that um, is that the, the resin or the flux which is inside is not only aggressive on the on the corrosion, on the erosion of the not the corrosion of the the materials that you're soldering, which is a good thing because it has a better connection then. Um, but it can also be aggressive on the copper itself, um, and which is a bad thing, especially if you have uh, like stranded thin wire. Um, because it will eat away the copper over time and it may actually break especially if you have vibrations in your insulation or your uh, product it can eat it away and eventually it will fail it will break it will snap off um, this happens when you use um, a solder with a flux inside which has the clean the clean which is clean labeled and I thought, well, clean, uh, it is clean, so no, what it means is you should clean afterwards. So you have to remove all the flux and the, and, and the resin from your product, um, so you have to clean it. Um, that way you prevent, you know, after, after reactions, chemical reactions. Um, so if you don't want to do that, you can also go for a no clean. So that means you don't have to clean afterwards. So um, what I picked was 0 0.5, 0 0.9 millimeters. I have two for different uh, situations. Uh, it's lead free and it's a no clean. That's what I use. And the second question is, can you do something about this high beep noise that you have in the video? So actually it's not really a question, it's more like a feedback slash question. Um, and I also heard it and it was also uh, annoying me but I, I couldn't find like audio filters in the video edit program that I was using so I tried a couple of different uh, programs and uh, as it turned out it is actually my audio program which I my audio sequencer um, that I used to use uh, for audio productions 
that has now an update that can do video editing as well. And as it turns out, that is the best option for me. It's, it works brilliantly, it, uh, the workflow is nice, I know the program already, I can do all the VSTs and VSDIs. And for video editing, I basically only need to, you know, like cut. So I'm not doing video editing anymore in a video editor, I'm doing video editing in an audio editor because it's better. So all the video editors, programmers there, out there, um, you have been beaten by an audio program. Think about that. 